Be inspired on Liberty Radio. Red, to be lucky in love. Yellow, to have a lot, a lot of money. Green, for the hope of better days. White, to have that longed for peace. Will the color of your outfit determine your year once again? Popular rituals always come strong on New Year's Eve, but they do not sustain your strength throughout the rest of the year. What can you expect from a day that can change not only the trajectory of your 2024, but your entire life? Join us for the New Year's Eve night vigil at the headquarters in Finsbury Park. In this place, you will experience a complete and unforgettable night for you and your family. Find a place full of extraordinary energy that could connect you to the Creator. Sunday, 31st of December at 10 p.m. Arrive early and enjoy this special night at 232 Seven Sisters Road, Finsbury Park, London. N4 3NX with all the London churches. Free entry. Good evening and welcome to Be Inspired. And we are only a few days away from the New Year's Night Vigil. In a few days, you'll be able to present not only your project to God, but to tell Him that you want to serve Him more and better. That's right. And until the end of the year in the night vigil will be the last opportunity where you will be able to present on the altar your request to be taken to Mount Sinai, your sacrifice. You can still do that. In fact, tomorrow in love therapy on Friday, any day until the night vigil. Because afterwards, in the beginning of the year, bishops will be going to Mount Sinai with your prayer requests. And now, we're going to watch one more testimony of a person, or actually a couple, who decided that enough was enough, and that they wanted the Spirit of God inside of them. Today, those who have the Spirit of God in them, there is a clear difference for those who don't, because there is peace, there is joy, there is strength. Let's watch this amazing testimony, and we'll come back in just a moment. After I'd been abandoned uh, with my ex-husband, left me with five children, and I went through a lot of difficulty in my health, in my life. And the worst moment of my life was when I lost my oldest son. He um, was killed. I was married for many years, and suddenly the marriage broke, and he my ex-husband left me with my five children and it was very difficult for me that time because he left me without nothing. I started to develop a lot of a problem in my health. I was suffering from insomnia, the loneliness and the emptiness was inside of me. It was like a deep, dark hole. I, I didn't know how to get up, having problems in my health too which I did suffer from um, 30 years in my grain. And that was very, very bad for me. And there I developed problems in my ear. I was diagnosed from deafness. And there I started to wear a hearing aid. I started to uh, looking for happiness in a loss of things. Like I used to go to nightclub. I used to drink a lot. Um, I used to, to meet a lot of different guys. Nothing was making me happy. And then I started to go looking for palm reader, but nothing, nothing was um, feeling that emptiness I had inside of me. My worst moment was when I lost my son. When I received the news about he uh, was killed uh, brutally, I fell completely uh, and and that was very painful for me to to get through i couldn't do anything 
with the sadness, emptiness was inside of me, um, was very painful. It was like I was tormented uh, myself with the depression. I couldn't, I couldn't get up many times. Um, I couldn't do anything. And after all those pains, everything I went through, um, I met uh, this lady and she's invited me to, for us to go out. Uh, but I didn't know uh, where I was going and she said that she, I will see when I'm getting there and there we end up. I end up in this huge, beautiful church. I didn't even know that was a universal church. Actually, I never heard about any church because I never was a person to go to any church. And I was there every day in the church. For me, every service was opportunity for me to grow uh, spiritual. I start to believe uh, in, in God. God was alive and I was feeling happy because all those problems I I, I came to the church with and I, I started to feel that they was going, uh, feel free. I wanted that God, well, the Holy Spirit. I never heard of it. But when I started to, to, to hear about it, I, I wanted that for me. I, I knew that will be everything that I needed. And then I went to the altar, pulled my sacrifice. I, I put it all my life, I put it all my anger, all my hates, all my revulsion, I put all the desperation, and thereafter, you know, carry on, seek the Holy Spirit in that service. And suddenly, I said, that's it. And I couldn't stop smiling. Until now, I am a new person. Today, I am very happy. I have, uh, I'm transformed. I am married again. I don't have any problem in my health. I'm strong, happy, and I'm sleeping well. All this is because the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is everything for me. It's my air, it's my, my food, it's my life, and I am so happy. So I came to the New Year's night video in 2022, and for me, it was a great way to start the new year. Going into the new year in the presence of God, setting my goals and presenting them to God, it gave me the spirit that I needed to go into this new year and have that goal and know what I'm working towards. So I need to fight for my goals. I can't just allow my goals to be something that are just up in the air. For me, I needed to really intensify what I was doing to work towards that. And it wasn't easy, especially in my battle to receive a new job. I received many rejections. It just didn't seem like it was what God wanted for me. So when the opportunity did come that I did actually take, I knew that it was a plan of God and it was according to the goals that I set at the start of the year. So coming to the New Year's Eve night vigil in 2022 really gave me the boost and encouragement that I needed to go into the new year with God, presenting all my goals to God, knowing that He is going to be with me throughout the year in every fight that I have. I want to show you why, like Jason said there, you should also start the new year in this night vigil together with us. Let me tell you why. You know, God, when He came to meet Abraham, He made a promise to Abraham, but a promise that was so special that I would like to read to you right now. In the book of Hebrews, chapter 6, Verse 13 and 14 says, For when God made a promise to Abraham, because he could swear by no one greater, he swore by himself, saying, Surely, blessing I will bless you, and multiplying I will multiply you. What stands out to me here in this verse is that God is so great that there is no one greater than him, and because of that, when he swore to bless Abraham, he swore it by, he swore by himself. You've probably heard people say, on my mother's life, on my children's life, I swear I didn't do this. People usually tend to make this kind of 
uh, vows or swear by someone who is greater than them, in, at least in terms of importance. That's why they speak about children, mother, and so on. But God said that He swore by Himself because He is the ultimate authority. Now imagine you having a pact, an alliance with this God who made the universe. That would mean that you wouldn't fight your battles alone anymore. That would mean that you wouldn't be on your own when you would fight against the enemies of life. We're not talking about people, by the way, but the enemies of life, the problems we face in life. Imagine if the God who swore by Himself would be with you. And that's what we are inviting you to do in this night vigil. We are inviting you to be present, whether here in Finsbury Park, if you're from London, or outside London in your local church, whether you will be here with us and say, my God, I want to have this pact with you like Abraham had. And if you read uh, in the book of Psalms, Psalm 118, I think, it says there, uh, I will pay my vows to the Most High in the presence of the peoples, of all the people. We are going to make a pact with God in this night vigil, in front of our God, before our God, but also before the people who will be there with us. They will be our witnesses. Not because they'll be hearing what you'll be saying, but everyone will be making that pact that in 2024, we will walk hand in hand with our God because we will have a pact with Him, with the one who swore by Himself. Abraham had a pact with God. Imagine if you also have a pact with this God. Well, Bishop, but I have a, a pact with God already. So do I. I will be renewing my pact with God on that day. And my dear friend, 2024 will be a blessing. We are going to, just a few minutes before midnight, we'll be taking part of the bread, the flesh of the Lord Jesus in the Lord's Supper. And immediately after midnight, drinking of the blood of the Lord Jesus. And that, in that moment, we'll be forming a pact with God. Leaving behind the year that ends, thanking God even for the battles we went through, but making sure that this new year will be a blessing. If you're watching me now and you want to make a pact with God, let's do that now. You can, perhaps now you will not make that pact, but you will say, God, I want to make this pact with you. Let's do that now. Would you like to do that, to make a pact with the one who swore by himself? Let's talk to God now. Let's talk to God. It's time to pray. Lord, when we read in your word that you swore by yourself, this clearly means that there is no one above you, no authority above you. And so I ask you, my Lord, that if this person sincerely wants to make a pact with the God who is the ultimate authority in this world and in the universe, the one where nothing goes unnoticed before His eyes, the one who knows the visible and the invisible, if this person wants to make a pact with you, Lord, with this God, then I ask you, my Father, that you may stretch out your hands to accept this person. We know, my Lord, that this pact is even unfair for you because you have nothing to gain from this pact. We have nothing to offer you. If I give my life to you or I don't, you continue to be God. But we have everything to gain. And we can see in this instant my Lord, how merciful and good you are. Because you could have not given us this chance, this opportunity, and yet you did. So my Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, I ask you, I ask you, Lord, that you receive 
the lives of these people who want to make a pact with you and that this night vigil will be like the parting of the Red Sea. It will mark the before and the after in the life of this person. A before of li a life of disobedience, who knows perhaps of your commandments and then afterwards a life of honoring you in everything that they will do. Father, I surrender these people who pray together with me in your hands. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Very well. Prepare yourself for this night vigil. In fact, let your family know. Invite them to be here together with you. Because, my dear friend, it's beautiful to see us entering the new year, holding hands together with our family. And during the prayer, during the night vigil, there'll be a moment where we will pray hand in hand with our loved ones. Don't miss this opportunity. We'll see you tomorrow here in the church for love therapy. We will have Pastor Oliver on the hot seat and we'll have Pastor Morris on the other hot seat with their respective wives. And don't forget, we're going to continue the homework sessions. Did you, did you do your homework of last, last week? Did you do the homework of last week? If not, please do it still before the love therapy. All right? We'll see you tomorrow. May God bless you. Bye-bye. This has been Be Inspired on Liberty Radio. If you'd like to donate in support of this work, please do so by any of the following ways. Via online banking using our details on screen. Through the QR code which will take you to the payment page on our website. Or you can gift aid your donation writing through the email address on screen. Thank you for your help.